the manager of the National League, Sid Scotty Red, Sparky Anderson. Batting first, playing third base. He's had over 200 hits this season, seven times, number 14, Pete Rowe. Batting second in right field, he drove in the winning run on Sunday, number 30, Ken Griffey. Batting third, playing second base, 67 stolen bases, 327 average, a mid rating 132 watts, number 8, Joe Morgan. Batting fourth, playing first base, the greatest RBI man in Cincinnati history, number 24, Tony Perez. Batting fifth, the catcher, he hit 25 home runs or more for seven straight seasons, number five, Johnny Kirk. Batting six in left field, he hit 300 with 23 home runs, number 15, Charles Foster. Batting seventh, a gold glove shortstop who scored Sunday's winning run, number 13, Dave Concepcion. Batting eighth in center field, another gold glove winner, number 20, Cesar Geronimo. The Cincinnati Reds. Lost two in World Series competition. They lost to the Cardinals in modern times, 46. Don Gullett from Lynn, Kentucky, all state and everything, including backgammon. It's a hot shot to shortstop Concepcion. And we have two down. Hits, hits with power, runs, throws, and was just born to play Major League Baseball. Nobody on, nobody out. Three and two to Fred Lynn. Don Gullett. Lynn pops it up. Concepcion waiting for it. One down. Kurt with the kind of fastball that Gullet has, he likes to pitch that fastball high in the strikes when he's up. Listen, man, the way he's going, he's going to buy two three farms. Two nothing pitch. Right back to Billingham. He's going to go to second for one. They're coming to the plate. They may have a rundown. They do. Bad running by the Red Sox. Bench tags him out. And I'm telling you, they came within an eyelash of a triple play. Cooper hesitated. He should have come in immediately, and he hesitated. Billingham went to second, Tony. Well, Billingham right here, a couple of guys appear to be yelling to him to go for Cooper coming in from third base. He decides to go to the double play. Another alert play by Concepcion. He made one yesterday on the ball. Bench with a pretty good play. Now we'll see the tag by Johnny, and close as you said, he's thinking... He has a simple sign, nice fastball. It's hit up the middle, and Concepcion has a big hop. Good sinker. Two up and two down. Billingham had a shaky first inning. Major yeah. Leaguers right, Ned. Down to Concepcion at short. Two outs. There I go. And a base hit to go for Concepcion if he wants to send this game farther than it is. Or give the Red Sox a chance on the night. Dave Concepcion is 0 for 3. Got him here. He's going to get him out of there. And yeah, that's what Concepcion will be looking for. So it's, you know, I got mine, you got yours. Let's see. That may be trouble. Doyle can't make the play and it's all tied up. Infield hit by Dave Concepcion. No play at all for Denny Doyle except to keep it in the infield. Johnny Bench scores and the Reds have tied it in the ninth. And here we go again. It was a pitch on the outer edge then tailing in. Could really see Concepcion swing down on that ball and once it got by Drago there wasn't much Doyle could do but keep it from going to the outfield. He couldn't really make a throw. He was running too hard. Watch the momentum carry him about three or four more steps. That's the kind when you stop right there you you just don't know what to do with it. You really want to take a bite on This should do it. Popped up towards short. Concepcion. There. And that's it. As the Reds take it in the second game of the series. Three up and three down in the ninth inning. Nothing across. The final score, Cincinnati beating the Red Sox 3-2 to two with a winner.
Bottom third of the batting order, Davey Concepcion, Cesar Geronimo, and pitcher Pat Darcy. Rick Wise, who pitched three innings, three-plus innings of no-hit baseball before giving up a two-out walk in the last inning to Tony Perez, then the stolen base, and then the first Cincinnati hit. A Johnny Bench home run to left field to give the Reds their present 2-1 lead. As Wise concludes his warm-ups to catcher Carlton Fisk, Dave Concepcion will scroll plateward for his second shot at the Boston right-hander tonight. Davey is 0-for-1 and a fly ball to right field his first time up. 1-for-9 so far in this 1975 World Series. This young man has as his goal to be the best Venezuelan shortstop in the history of Major League Baseball. And mm. well, you're talking about <laughs> Tony, Chico, Carrasquel, and Louis Aparicio mm. as four runners. Talk about Aparicio, you're talking about something. First pitch on the inside part of the plate for a taken strike. Concepcion questioning plate umpire Larry Barnett about that pitch. And I closed out the season very, very strong. In fact, he had 340 the final month of the year and closed out the year with a nine-game hitting streak. He hits one a ton back into left center field. Looking up is Jastrzemski and gone. A home run. Concepcion taking the grand tour as he takes Rick Wise downtown. A shot to left center field, and now well, the Reds go out in front three to one. No matter what happens the rest of this ball game, win or lose, the headlines in the Venezuelan papers are going to be Concepcion, and that's front page. That's what happened in the championship series when he homered against Pittsburgh. You mentioned those two names, Carascal and Aparicio, played against both both Marty and Kirk. Concepcion has more all around ability than either of them. For shouting out to the runner at second Fisk. Here's a bouncing ball charging Concepcion. And that's all for the Red Sox in the sixth inning. They got a run. No hits. A man left on. The Red Sox trying to battle back. They're down by three big ones in the seventh. Swung on. That could be two. Morgan Concepcion for Red. And that is a highly underrated part of this total team the Cincinnati Reds have. Morgan and Concepcion, you have said it before, but they just might be the best all-around ever to play the game. Bouncing ball of Concepcion to Morgan, one, that's all they're going to get. Evans can run. Faces it all, R3-0. and oh. Bouncing ball of Morgan. There's one, and there's two, double play, 4-6-3. And the crowd loves it. That double play again, you got to love the way Morgan gives you that ball. You'll see right here why David Concepcion's son's middle name is Alexander after Alex Kramis, who spent so much time working on him with just that specific play, among many others. A lot of out. Quiet 300, doesn't he, Marty? Just a steady 300. He really does, Joe. And, uh, of course, they talk about this season for Cincinnati. The big key when they talk about it will be the movement of Pete Rose to third and Foster to left field that really turned this team around. That was the move that kicked the big red machine in the gear. And here's Concepcion. Two men out, 5-2 Boston Lini. win the bottom half of the fourth inning. Good fastball. That's the best fastball he's thrown, Tony. Burleson was telling me before the ball game that he played against Concepcion several years ago in Venezuela in the Winter Leagues. And he said he never thought that Concepcion would hit. He stood so far away from the plate, held a bat on the end, and couldn't reach pitches outside part of the plate. But Big Clue got a hold of him, and look what he's made of him. Really a, well, a, a tremendous shortstop. Hopped up. Going out, Burleson coming in, Lynn, could be triple, and it's Foster scores, and it's a two-base hit for Concepcion. There's no reason for that ball dropping. It was a tough play for anybody who had to make it. Lynn usually comes and gets these kinds of balls near collision. This is what happens when you get out of Fenway on this artificial surface, just a shade deeper, and he couldn't get it. Zimmer at third base pretty much the same way. 1-1 one, one pitch. Concepcion's going to have to hustle and makes his play at second base and they get Evans. He could not have gotten Burleson. They've really been swinging the bats no matter who's on the mound. They've been hitting some shots. They look uh, 
to me tonight has determined any game in a series are really bearing down. And of course, receiving a great pitching performance so far doesn't hurt him. And Don Gullett. One out, nobody on. Concepcion. Low inside to him for a ball. Last of the sixth inning. Five runs. Seven hits for the Red. One run, one hit for the Red Sox. Outside, 2-0 oh, to Dave Concepcion. Morgan started with a walk. Bench single. Perez homered. Foster's lined out. And Concepcion the batter. He's hit by a big ball. He got hit on the right hand. That ball rode right in on him. Sparky Anderson very concerned. Willoughby's ball really tails in the right-handed hitters. You see David really aggressively going after the ball. He has no chance. Looked like it might have nicked his shirt first and then picked him off on the hand. That's the kind of pitch that Jim Rice received a broken hand uh, just before the end of the season. But then it get him on the elbow, the forearm. It's like right at the, mm -hmm. the point of the elbow. Well, that can be painful. And it's on his throwing arm, too, which, if it should stiffen up, will make it difficult for Concepcion to make some throws. He's a valuable piece of property. This year, he didn't have quite the year they expected of him. In the meantime, Dick Paul has joined Roger Moretta in the Red Sox bullpen. This has been a long inning for uh, Don Gullett to be sitting in that dugout. Morgan and uh, Cleveland must have taken about 10 minutes for their cat and mouse game. Remember, Concepcion's arms hurt, not his leg. He rarely gets thrown out when he attempts to steal a base. And Willoughby, long and lanky from the side, not noted for quickness. That's right, uh, Concepcion uh, swiped 33 out of 39 this year. Kurt Sparky Anderson getting uh, rookie Doug Flynn up and loosening in the Cincinnati bullpen in the event that Concepcion has to come out. Now that elbow could stiffen up on him. Willoughby with his stretch. There goes the runner. There's a throwdown. And it's an easy steal for Concepcion. He's been taught an awful lot about base stealing by Joe Morgan. You can see they've got almost identical leads. One foot on the dirt, one foot on the artificial surface, and it's just no contest for Carlton Fest. The Reds now have stolen six bases in this series in eight attempts. Well, not only this season, but during the World Series. May not be as colorful as Sparky Anderson in giving the answers that the writers may want, but he is logical, he's to the point, honest. and he is honest. Yes. That's and a pop-up. Shortstop Concepcion is going back. He'll call for it. And Cooper is retired. One out in the third inning. Darrell Johnson. Sometimes they put a wrap on that's one of Sparky Anderson's prime requisites for anybody out of his bullpen. And the two kids and the two veterans, Barbone and Carroll, can do it. That is throw strikes. Bouncing ball, Concepcion, one hand grab. So it's a one, two, three inning for the Red Sox. So at the end of seven, it's six to five. And there were two in the 73 series between the Mets and the A's and in a number of series before that. Dave Concepcion, been retired four times tonight. As we've mentioned so many times, you can never take the bottom third of the Cincinnati order lightly. They have power and speed as well as just as the top half does. They'll look from the scoreboard in left field. Gray goes high with that pitch. Year old left hander called up after pitching a no hitter in Pawtucket, the Red Sox AAA farm in June. The 
3-1 to Concepcion. And a base hit up the middle. That's the 12th hit of the game for the Reds against Boston pitching. Concepcion is on at first, and we'll see Cesar Geronimo. Bouncing ball, Concepcion. In time. Well, there are two away. Here is Jastrzemski. He's up there trying to get that extra base hit. This crowd has been up and down and up and down. They're going to be drained. Nobody, obviously, has left the ballpark. The pitch to Concepcion, a bouncing ball, the throw. It's in time, so Yastrzemski is out. Three up and three down. Dave Concepcion leading off for the Reds in the fifth inning. The Red Sox leading 3-0 in game seven. Strike one. The Reds are a great fastball hitting team. Lee is serving them up the sinkers, breaking stuff. Well, he pitched as good a game as the series has seen, really, Sunday a week ago. Ran into trouble in the ninth and giving up that leadoff double the bench. Opposite field. Yes, backhands has to hurry. Not in time. Lee broke late that time, coming off the mound. Yep. The style of falling so off the mound to our third base got him in trouble that time. And, of course, Concepcion leaning over the plate for the outside pitch. Got a good break out of the box. Watch Lee hustle over right at the end. He has the ball in his grasp when he tags Concepcion. Now he never did have possession. All he has in mind right now is trying to get a hit to get on. Back in his delivery. There's a ground ball to Concepcion. Red Sox are down to their last out. The Reds are one out away. They're winning the World Championship. Two down, nobody on. Joe Morgan's bloop single right now is the difference. Top of the ninth inning, he put the Reds ahead. There's a high fly ball. It should be all over. Geronimo's under it. And Cincinnati has won the World Championship, beating the Boston Red Sox 4-3. to three. The Reds win it in Fenway Park. Some of the veterans on this team have been very frustrated. They wanted this one badly after winning 108 times this year, setting all kinds of records. It would have been a deep disappointment for them not to win. But they ran up against a ball club that extended them right down to the final inning of Game 7. This was the Reds' 115th victory tonight. McEnany saves it. The crowd's out on the field. Here's the Cincinnati locker room. And the crowd is giving applause, not only for the Reds as world champs, but applause for both clubs, the way they played in this World Series. One of the best World Series of modern times for the baseball fans of America. There's Pete Rose, Joe Morgan, Concepcion, and the Red fans should be proud of this ball club. After the Red Sox dramatically won it last night, the Reds playing on the road could have blown it tonight, but they didn't. They got behind early, 3 to nothing. They hung in there, and they beat the Red Sox 4-3.